Bonjour mes amis, hi guys, we're going straight into the unboxing cam. Yes, we have a Seiko and it's a hot one. Oh, I guess this spills the bean. <laughs> you know what's gonna be there, but what you don't know is the is the color. Of course, it's the Ow! Panda. Almost looks yellow here on my camera, but it's the uh, the white dial Panda. The sub dial bizarrely look uh, bluish in uh, in some light, and then uh, back to to black in others. I was actually looking forward to also see the uh, golden dial, but it wasn't at the shop. I saw the blue one, which is a lot nicer in person and maybe the most interesting in person because of the red color as well. Uh, more nicer in person than uh, on, on picture and videos. And then uh, there was the, the black one, which is a bit so-so, mm, especially with the, the faux patina on the hands, which you have also on this one here. So uh, let's take it out of the pouch and uh, examine this baby a little closer. So this is reference SSC 813P1 with the caliber V192. And here it is on the wrist, great dimension. So the watch is uh, 39, slightly over 39 millimeters. You've got a thickness of 13.3 uh, with a domed sapphire crystal with some uh, anti-reflecting coating, uh, I think. Uh, lug to lug is uh, 45, extending to 50 if you take the uh, end links on each side. So quite good there on my uh, 17 centimeter wrist. In the, of course, uh, the, the width here is 20 millimeters or so easy to change straps. So right away, I will tell you that it comes on the, the prospects type of uh, bracelet that you, you've been seeing uh, lately. And I'm not sure it's really adapted uh, for, for this watch at the end link here. Uh, I would have preferred actually a bit more the old style of bracelets, more like a, a flat type of uh, oyster uh, bracelet. I mean, this one is good enough and it has a simple clasp, which I don't mind, uh, but I'm not sure it really suits the style of the, the watch. It's also, as usual, uh, a, a bit noisy, a bit uh, loose, but otherwise it is relatively comfortable. The only issue is that, as you will notice, I have it fairly tight because if I add one link and uh, move to the next uh, little uh, hole here, the, the pin, it be, it's still uh, too loose. So I'm a bit stuck in between um, two links, uh, really. I would have needed something, uh, something extra, a half link, uh, I, ideally. And here is on a strap, very, cool looking i actually prefer this look to the look on the bracelet maybe i'm becoming a, one of those strap guys this is the strap i got from uh, charlie charlie uh, parry very cool looking it adds a different dimension to uh, to this watch i think than the the bracelet uh, the watch has such a cool cool vibe nice uh, case shape, very Seiko, that sort of uh, flat 70s style case shape, really cool. Yeah, here, nice and tight, it looks great. So the case is very much like the 62, 62 mass case I'm grabbing uh, to show you visually what I mean. That very rectangular opening uh, here between, the, between the, the lugs, the case doesn't have any fancy, fancy polishing, uh, though it's polished on, on the on the side. It's a nice case, reminds me a bit more of uh, the Zenit uh, Chronomaster Sport there, uh, a little bit. 
as, as you can see the bezel i assume this is made of aluminum let's uh, zoom in you can see the numbers are on, a, on an angle and uh, the graduations are on a flat surface so interesting uh, interesting bezel uh, look you can see a bit of the, the distortion there on the domed sapphire crystal unlike all omegas the 120 is precisely in the middle if you have a moon watch you will notice that they never quite managed to get the, the 120 uh, dot right in the middle of the six o'clock as it should be the watch is solar powered you can see that the the, the sub dials actually uh, where it uh, captures the, the light you can see the little details the little bar there uh, as well those sub dials pick up the light a lot so often they look uh, more blue than, uh, than black or even a bit gray you have the seconds here here you have a it's not a gmt unfortunately it's just a 24 hour hand so at least you see uh, when it's uh, daytime uh, night time and here you have the 60 minutes counter for the chronograph also you have a power reserve here like a fuel gauge f is full e is empty at full power you still have a hundred days of power and uh, it's pretty much all the time full just a bit of light artificial or sunlight and uh, it will uh, quickly replenish now let's start the chronograph the pushers are, are very very soft but look what happens here on the, on the gauge it goes to zero for the minute counter you can split the chronograph pushing uh, here on the button that also acts as acts as the reset when you push it again it will catch up and then you can stop it and reset the reset has that cool little uh, function and as you can see the minute counter stays at zero but if you push again it will indicate again the power reserve pretty cool little feature of this uh, chronograph also the chronograph runs if i'm not mistaken at five ticks per second so you have a bit the feel of a uh, of a regular uh, mechanical chronograph which, which is quite nice. The date has a strange position there, uh, a bit after the, the four o'clock. It's nicely nestled uh, though, so quite quite discreet. I love to have the, the date. You have loom, the loom has a bit of a faux patina. I think they probably tried white and thought it's a bit too much white with already, already the three white hands. So I don't mind it, it adds a bit of a color. There's loom at the 12, three, uh, six and nine on the uh, indices there's no room on the other indices which by the way are quite light reflective uh, quite polished and the loom of course stays uh, it's seiko loom so you see it all night no problem there and you have the loom on the the hands which are black around i really like how they did the uh, applied the uh, logo and the prospects logo for once is at the right place so the watch is called the speed timer speed timer and there's different colors uh, as you have seen there is also a rather thick and expensive uh, automatic version of the watch it comes in gray as you can see here on my wrist and also with a more fetching probably uh, white dial i think uh, retailers will keep these on the shelves for much much longer than the quartz versions yeah this one just uh, just too thick really and uh, overall this one has a really striking look now i uh, paid around 500 us dollars for it so i get a bit of a discount on the, the retail price is it a 500 dollar watch well it is very striking uh, it is uh, got sapphire crystal 100 meters of water resistance uh, seems like a very well built watch not crazy about the choice of the the bracelet clasp is uh, is simple but again the adjustment is not great of course for 500 dollars you can get um it's, it's starting to get pretty serious uh, money uh, but i think that they give you a pretty striking serious watch uh, very flat on the wrist wears great Everybody's going to want this one, the, the Panda. Of course, people compare it uh, to the, the Rolex Daytona. They call it the Seikona. 
but there's many other brands that did a Panda and actually the Daytona of Rolex doesn't have uh, full black uh, Pandas, uh, subdials. Uh, they, they only have the uh, outer ring uh, in, in black, but to other people this will remind them of, of a Zenit or, or maybe a, a Tag or, or whatever. There's uh, many brands have done uh, Pandas. Uh, it's a striking look, it's a cool look. My first uh, luxury watch was also a Panda, uh, Omega Speedmaster Racing. And I think, uh, yeah, five hundred dollar, you get a, you get an interesting, cool, cool watch. It's a fun watch. Most importantly, I think uh, it's a watch for enthusiasts. Yeah, it can be easily your only watch. Where, where's great? Got loom. So there you go. Let me know in the comments what you think. Are you gonna try to add one to your collection? And uh, thank you very much for watching. Bye bye, guys.